No hits left. Negative one. All right, now let's quit game, and there we go. So change that back to 10, and now you're good to go. All right, so to get it positioned properly, if you look closely, the bullet is positioned properly on the hor X coordinate, the horizontally, but not vertically. So as you can see in the X part, we added source.texture.width divided by 2 here. We need to do that for the Y part as well. Now it will mess up the player bullet, but it will not look that bad. So we open in parentheses down here below where it says source.position.y. And then we add a plus sign after the closing parentheses on the far right. And we do this all before the semicolon. So plus source.texture.height divided by 2. Now we have a closing parentheses and a semicolon. And let's press F5. And let's see how it works. So the player, it shoots directly in the center, which is fine if you want it that way. It shoots directly in between the two turrets. And now the enemy, it shoots as well. So if you want to push it more uh, ahead, you can do like I did in the sample, and that's determine if the source is player. We can just add the position in here. So if source is player, we can just add bracket here and set position is equal to, we can just do it differently. So position is equal to, then we can delete the plus here because that was correct for the player. And then the else, we just cut this and then paste it in there, just like that. So now we did, we did the same thing I did in my sample, which is if source is player, set the position to something, and then L, set the position to something. That's if you want it to be a little bit more correct on how it's going. And we missed a semicolon where? There we go. All right. So now when we fire, it's now above the ship. It's above the entire texture. Now when the enemy fires, it's still on the enemy itself, so you want to push that again. So you can mess with the position here if you want to. Or just like I had before, you can just have it outside of the source is player and else, and just have a standardized position for both enemies and player. Alright, so that's it for this series. We corrected the bullet, we got the game over screen, pause screen and I talked a little bit about how to communicate between a several objects to the main play screen so how do I add a bullet to the play screen when I'm already in the player screen updating one way to do that is set a static list and static add object and then the uh, play screen will loop through that and add it to its internal public, not static, but public list. So it's object list. All right. So then we had uh, several menu screens. And then we talked. One of the main issues I had was we talked about is positioning the bullet, the enemy, and the player so they're all facing the same way. You saw what issues I had when I walked you through the tutorial, and the bullet was not positioned the right way. So make sure, if you position it a different way, make sure you anticipate that. If you knew, if you knew the bullet was vertical, and you want to keep it that way, you know that the math functions will now operate differently. So you need to add it plus 90 if it's vertical. If it's pointing up, you need to add 90 degrees to the rotation calculation in order to get it properly. If it's pointing down, you need to subtract 90. If it's pointing left, you need to add or subtract 180, whatever your choice is, and just to get it positioned properly. It's a good idea to make it all positioned the right way. 
If you want to position them all straight up, that's fine. If you want to position them all straight down or any other way. If you want to position them all 45 degrees, that's fine. But it's just a lot easier if you position every single texture in the game the same way. Or else you're going to have to do, for every bullet, I need to do this math calculation. For every enemy, oh, it's positioned a different way than everything else. So I need to do a different math calculation to autocorrect it and stuff like that. Fonts, we already been through that quite a few times before. So we didn't really talk about that. Uh, pause screen, I talked about the built-in parent that I added to the menu system. So you just add a parent uh, game screen to the menu screen itself. And then whenever you exit the screen, if the parent is frozen, it will unfreeze it and resume the screen that was the parent. This does not freeze it, so you need to freeze it before you call the constructor. Uh, let's see what else. There's a few more. Uh, I don't know if it's in this one. We can check. But I'm working on another screen system, a complete screen system that I add a dot hovered or dot active or dot selected that whenever you move your mouse over or mouse or keyboard over it like this it'll perform a different action because it's either highlighted or hovered or however I'm going to name it and then when you actually activate it it will be either selected or activate and then we'll, it will accept the mouse the new screen system alright well that's pretty much it for this series uh, not much different than the original sample I created a long time ago, but I did a few things differently. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're a public viewer, you're going to have to wait a little while for the extras to be released. If you're a premium member, they will resume just like on a regular schedule. So next time, there will be an extras tutorial next week for the premium members. So I hope to see you next time, and for the public viewers, I'm hoping to get the Tower Defense series started by the middle of the fall, middle or late fall.